Well, here we go again. Doctors Against Guns, Part 2. Last night, I wanted to watch The Agenda with, uh, with uh, Steve Pakin. Unfortunately, my wife had a program she wanted to watch. Considering I'm retired, she's working. I thought, priorities, right? Um, I did catch snippets of it. You know, during commercials, I'd flip over and see what they had to say. I happened to catch one segment, just one little short segment. And the first thing, I just exploded. I went, liar! The segment I caught where she said, what was that? 30 to 50% of legally acquired firearms are diverted to the criminal market. Liar! You are a fucking liar. Show me your numbers. Show me where you got that information. That is an absolute 100% proven falsehood. That's, I'm surprised that uh, the uh, C, uh, CCFR, Rod Giltaka, did not address that statement particularly and demand to see her evidence. Once again, once again, what's bugging me about this is the naive stupidity from a degreed professional who believes that their competence in one area makes them an expert in all areas, obviously. And it's a social conscience issue, and so many people are killed by firearms. They are. We do have a firearm problem in Toronto. There's no two ways about it. Gangs. It's a gang problem. Well, except for the Danforth shooter, which is domestic terrorism, as much as they tied themselves into pretzels trying to deny that. It was a Muslim terrorist. End of story. Okay, uh, she says, our firearm murder stats are higher than the United Kingdom. Island nation, Australia. Island nation, Japan. Island nation, and Holland, the one she mentioned, which is not an island nation. But the Dutch, the English, the Japanese do not have a long and storied hunting tradition like we do and like our American neighbors do. They don't have that pioneer history, not that far removed. My grandparents were pioneers, and that's not even, that's just over 100 years ago, where a firearm was an essential tool. And still, in many rural areas, a firearm is an essential tool. They're not shooting each other up, given the 2.2 million legal gun owners, and for a fact, I happen to know that there are firearm owners who do not have licenses. These are, in many cases, generational firearms that have been passed down from father to son. Rule, it's not regarded as anything other than a tool. It puts food on the table. It protects the homestead from predators, livestock from predators. They don't even think of it in the terms that urbanites do. We share, I've said this before, we share over 5,500 miles. The longest undefended border in the world with the, one of the most prolific firearms manufacturers in the world. How does this Dr. Najma Ahmed, Ahmad think that a firearms ban is going to negatively impact the firearm stats. Considering that, like I said, she lied about this 30 to 50% of legal firearms are being diverted. Oh my God, I don't know where those numbers come from. Picked out of the air. Um, there are so many flawed studies out there. People play games with numbers to support their contention. I mean, we all know this. We've seen this time and time and time again. Uh, So-called academics and researchers, they start with a theory and then twist and bend the facts and the data to suit their theory rather than doing what any ethical researcher does is you have a theory, gather all the evidence, all the evidence pro and contra, and see if your theory is supportable or defensible. And if it's not, Dr. John Lott is a great example. He started off, I'm told, as an anti-firearms, well, at least neutral about firearms, and wanted to see where the evidence led him. He's now a strong pro-firearms advocate. He gets slammed for his contention. 
I'd like to illustrate, I've done this before to people, it's quite funny, how you can play games with numbers. And I've seen studies and I watch how they play games, how they tweak the stats, how they cherry pick, how they even present the questions. And one of my favorites is, look, 11 fingers, right? 11 fingers. Now, anybody watching this is going to say, he's a wacko. No. Watch. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, and 5 equals. That's the kind of games they play with numbers. Exactly this tweaking and, and adjusting the numbers. That flawed study by Sick Kids Hospital came out that one, one, um, one teenager was shot every day. They tied themselves into freaking pretzels trying to make this work. They kept altering the parameters. They kept fudging the numbers. They kept including things that had no business being in a firearms database. And they, find, and they kept upping the ages. I think it finally came up to 24 or 25 years old. Teenager at 24 or 25? Uh, doctor, that stops. But you stop being a teenager at 18. You're considered a legal adult. FYI. Degreed professional, my ass. And they included Nerf guns, paintball guns, pellet guns. I'm surprised they didn't include like elastic and uh, paper clip. Like, ah! <coughs> Hence my anger at this Dr. Uh, Ahmad. The other thing that just from a sheer standpoint of logic, this Dr. Ahmed, there is no actual mechanism presented. You follow? There's no actual mechanism presented where if we do this, we will mitigate or, or at least seriously impact firearm crime in this country. Uh, let's ban guns. I, I've gone on about this before. It is simplistic. It is naive. It is disingenuous to sit there and say, let's ban guns. It's as stupid as saying, let's ban cars and there'll be no more traffic accidents. I mean, it, it is literally that stupid, this total illogic, okay? What, what was her other phrase? Ah, yes, semi-automatic firearms she wants to go after, and uh, high-velocity assault-type weapons. What the fuck is a high-velocity assault-type weapon? weapon. It's been said over and over by the firearms community, you cannot buy an assault rifle per se in Canada. You can't. They are by their very nature select fire, which means you can go fully automatic, which is a machine gun, and you cannot buy them in Canada. Eh, end of story. So high velocity assault style weapons. Every, any center fire rifle, it, you can call any center fire rifle a high velocity, whether it is truly a an ultra high velocity or high, they're all high velocity. Even a 22 is a high velocity if, if you get some of the stingers or some of the high velocity 22 ammo. High velocity assault style, assault style weapons? What the hell is an assault style weapon? You mean something that looks scary? Do you know there are kit cars available? You can buy a Volkswagen chassis, the old Volkswagen chassis, and you can buy a kit. That makes it look like uh, an old British MGB or MGA, um, what a, a, the old English sports car. It looks like an MG, but it's actually a Volkswagen. You can buy kits to make your, I think I saw one, it was a Fiero or something like that. Some economy sedan that they had put, it, it looked like a Ferrari. The decals, everything, it looked like a Ferrari, but it was... Like I said, a uh, uh, North American compact. Okay, kit car. So we're going to attack things based on how they look. Now, the liberals have done this, and this was interesting. I was told, I have no reason to disbelieve this, there's a book published called Guns Annual. And it is for interest to shooters of uh, firearms, new products, uh, stories about hunting, stories about firearms, competitions. It's, it's just for people, aficionados of firearms. But there is a catalog listing in there. It's like an almanac of 
all the currently manufactured firearms. They break them down into uh, handguns, like revolvers and semi-automatics. They break them into uh, shotguns, over-unders, side-by-side, pump, semi-automatic, uh, rifles, bolt action, semi-automatic, pump action, lever action, all the different... Uh, they have black powder firearms, which are replicas of antiques. But basically, they break all this down. Apparently, under Alan Rock, when the liberals were going through about what they should ban, do you know what they did? They went through a guns annual, apparently, and they said, ooh, ooh, that looks scary. Oh, we, we got to get rid of that. It looks scary. What it? Oh, that one looks scary. Let, let, let's get rid of that. Ooh, ooh, that one looks scary. Let's get rid of that. The other one that was really cute under Alan Rock was the barrel length, uh, where it ceased to be restricted, became a prohibited firearm. Now, I'm not going to go into prohibited firearms. You can look at the status on your own. Uh, it's, it's a backdoor gun grab because as they do not give up new prohibited status. So as the old people who have prohibited status age, they can only sell to a prohibited status. And I think some cases they will grandfather them. But because they're only tradable among people with prohibited status and they no longer give out status as the population ages and these firearms, the cops look at prohibited status, this person's died, uh, they just come and take it. There's no compensation to the widows or to the family, it's just seized. So, where am I going with this? This Dr. Najma Ahmed, like, God bless her, trauma surgeon, she has all my respect as a trauma surgeon. Okay, I am not deriding her in her field. Um, I've watched a lot of medical programs, you know, entertainment. Does that make me qualified to speak about medicine? I think not. The other one, and I brought this up in the last post, part one. And look up the stats yourself. Preventable medical deaths. Preventable. This is doctor error. This is hospital error. In Canada, see how many people are killed, die. She bleeds for these the victims of shooting and the families of the victims of shooting. How about the families of somebody who's gone in for a minor medical procedure and dies because of a medical screw-up? How about them? Do you bleed for them too, equally? Uh, are you equally castigatory of the doctors who are, some of them out there, who are very, very poor practitioners of medicine? Um, are you equally scatological of your colleagues who uh, should not be practicing medicine? Do you speak up? Do you say anything? Do you report them to the college? Of course not. There's a siege mentality. We got to stick together. I know from the 10 years I worked at Princess Margaret, one incident I heard of where a doctor misdiagnosed the medication and the patient went blind. Uh, those of you who have been in hospitals, you know, people who've had surgery, they try to get them out of the hospital as quickly as possible and back home. In some cases, even before, they should actually be right on the line of where they should be released. Because the infection rate, post-operative infection rate in hospitals is pretty bad. They are germ factories. There are so many bugs floating around in there that people who had successful surgery are, are getting into distress from uh, severe infections. Again, this is not my opinion. Look at the stats. The stats are all there if you choose to look them up. This day of action, I was tempted to show up. That's tomorrow here in Toronto, by the way. I was tempted to show up, and uh, unfortunately, something else has come up. I won't. I didn't want to engage them. I wanted to tape them and listen to how much bullshit they spewed out and basically pass it on to Mr. Giltak or to the CSSA and CCFR and say, here's what they're saying. Please pick this apart. Take each point. You can uh, edit the video, what they said and what the facts are, what they said and what the facts are. Not confrontational, not in your face, just how do you counter the lies? We respect our degreed professionals. I went on about this before in, in politics. We respect our degreed professionals. We expect better of our degreed professionals. There is a tendency among some of them to assume a mantle of more authority or knowledge than they truly possess, and that's ego and... Uh, smug, self-righteous stupidity, quite frankly. So, this Doctors Against Guns, they are harmful to the firearms community, but they lose credibility. Everybody, and I've asked this before, I've been debating this for, oh God, decades, the whole firearms rights issue, long before firearms rights 
advocacy groups sprung up in this country. We, we didn't need them when I was young. But people who are anti-firearms, and I've listened to the arguments, and over these many years, I've come up with valid counter-arguments, almost invariably. This one that we should have a firearms ban. Try to pin them down. Okay, nuts and bolts. Real world practicality. You ban firearms. Next step, what happens? And you know what? They, well, well, the, the crime rate will drop. Well, there's garbage comes out. They, they don't think this through and they have no real practical knowledge, life experience or practical knowledge of the subject matter to be able to think this through. If you get what I'm saying, they just cannot follow their, it's a simple pronouncement, like I said, it, and it's naively simplistic, but there is no way to implement it. When you ask them on a nuts and bolts, hard level, practical, pragmatic implementation, how would you do this? They, oh my God, they're totally clutched out. They really are. So what I'm asking you folks and it's not a question of firearms. It's a question of fairness. When you listen to someone spouting off, take the emotions out of the equation. Just go for logic and intellect. Ask them, how will this work? How will this be implemented? What will it cost? <laughs> Who's going to pay for this? I would ask, don't throw firearm owners under the bus based on Ego-propelled bullshit, because that's what it is. Most of it is ego-propelled bullshit and a liberal anti-firearms agenda. If you vote liberal, you'll go for it anyways. We'll go on that in another post. But listen, thank you, my fellow Canadians. Thank you for listening.